Uptown. Our communion for February, our communion collection for February will go to our heat fund. And this is certainly the time of year when that needs some attention. Our mission jar for February will be the Ukraine Trust Chain. Today's altar flowers are given to the glory of God. <coughs> our Bible study, Entering the Passion of Jesus by Amy Jill Levine, which is a six week study, We'll start February 15th. We're only going to have a morning uh, session, this study. The sign-up sheet is in the back. Um, I hope you'll consider getting a book. It's an interesting read. Uh, we wish to order them very soon so that we can have the books in time to read perhaps the introduction in the first chapter prior to the 15th. But if you're not on the sign-up sheet, um, I hope you'll do so. And on February 18th at the um, Vincent Town UMC, there will be a concert to benefit, <laughs> to benefit the Ukraine Trust Chain. And there's also going to be an antique sale to raise funds. Um, Okay, um, antiques or crafts that you hope to um, put for the table for the Ukraine trust chain. There's a bin in the back, and if you have any further questions, or I guess uh, you're welcome to, to, see, to see Brenda about that. We have a thank you letter from the United Methodist Communities uh, for our contribution to their gift of care circle. So we continue to be generous. It's, it's amazing how this little church takes our faith outside of these walls with our donation. And today is only the fourth, so we don't have a birthday this week or anniversary. Are there any other announcements that need to be raised or emphasized? There being none, let's stand and lift our voices in our gathering chorus of Blessed Be the Name, page 6-3. As we remain standing, we'll join in this morning's call to worship. Early in the morning, we seek God's face. In this place apart, we listen for God's word. In the hour of this day, we will live to God's news. All God's love to all who receive it. May God write the law of love on our hearts and restore in us the joy of salvation. We will come to God in all thanksgiving, grateful that we have communion for us the service. Our hymn of praise is Praise to the Lord the Almighty, page 139.
seated. Let's join in our opening prayer. May the Lord be with you. Let us pray. God of heaven and earth, we bind ourselves to this world. Seek a vision beyond ourselves and our immediate circumstances. Direct our thoughts toward the marvels of your creation and the vast possibilities for good that you have placed within us. Gather us to yourself and link us to one another in ways that will build up your church and empower our service. We dare to come to you again, Lord God, asking for forgiveness. Too often we are tossed and turned through nights of despair, and we awaken without hope. We have seen clouds without rejoicing over refreshing rain. We have confused freedom with license and mistaken humble service for weakness. Help us and lift us, we pray. We ask these things in Christ's name. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom. medication. Our act of praise is page 859. It's Psalm 147 and we will do only verses 1 through 11. Praise the Lord for it is good to sing praises to our God. A song of praise is fitting. The Lord builds up Jerusalem and gathers the outcasts of Israel. The Lord heals the brokenhearted and binds up their wounds. The Lord determines the number of the stars and gives to all of them their names. Great is our Lord and abundant in power, whose understanding is beyond measure. The Lord gives up the down of God and the cast the wicked to the ground. Sing to the Lord with thanksgiving. Make melody upon the lyre to our God, who covers the heavens with clouds, prepares rain for the earth, makes grass grow upon the hills. The Lord gives to the beasts their food, and to the maidens their crop. The Lord takes no delight in the might of a horse, nor pleasure in the strength of a runner. But the Lord takes pleasure in the faithful and those who hope in the Lord's steadfast love.
Good morning. Good morning. The Old Testament reading for today comes from Isaiah 40, verses 21 through 31. This can be found on page 668 in your pew Bible. Have you not known? Have you not heard? Has it not been told you from the beginning? Have you not understood from the foundation of the earth? It is he who sits above the circle of the earth, and its inhabitants are like grasshoppers, who stretches out the heavens like a curtain and spreads them like a tent to live in, who brings princes to naught and makes the rulers of the earth as nothing. Scarcely are they planted, scarcely sown, scarcely has their stem taken root in the earth. When he blows upon them and they wither, and the tempest carries them off like stubble. To whom then will you compare me, or who is my equal, says the Holy One. Lift up your eyes on high and see. Who created these? Who brings out their host and numbers them, calling them all by name, because he is great in strength, mighty in power, not one is missing. Why do you say, O Jacob, and assert, O Israel, my way is hidden from the Lord, and my right is disregarded by my God? Have you not known? Have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He does not faint or grow weary. His understanding is unsearchable. He gives power to the faint and strengthens the powerless. Even youths will faint and be weary, and the young will fall exhausted by those who wait for the Lord, shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Mm -hmm. The gospel lesson for today comes from Mark 1, verses 29 through 39. This can be found on page 35 of the New Testament in your pew Bible. Please stand if you wish. As soon as they left the synagogue, they entered the house of Simon and Andrew with James and John. Now Simon's mother-in-law was in bed with fever and told him about her at once. He came and took her by the hand and lifted her up. Then the fever left her and she began to serve them. That evening at sunset, they brought to him all that were sick or possessed by demons and the whole city was gathered around the door. And he cured many who were sick with various diseases and cast out many demons. And he would not permit the demons to speak because they knew him. In the morning, while it was still very dark, he got up and went out to a deserted place, and there he prayed. And Simon and his companions hunted for him. When they found him, they said to him, Everyone is searching for you. He answered, let us go on to the neighboring town so that I may proclaim the message there also, for that is what I came out to do. And he went throughout all Galilee, proclaiming the message in their synagogues and casting out demons. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. This morning I'm going to play, uh, we have a story to tell to the nations.
Nice to be back home with you here. We, um, we, we went to Florida in search of uh, sun. We were disappointed in that. Um, very little sun to be had. Lots of clouds, though. Thankfully, the temperatures were good and uh, the company an added uh, blessing to our time. But as all of you know, it's good to be away, but very nice to be back home, um, however long or short that time may be. So good to be here among you as a faith family and to enjoy this time together and to have a sense that our goal is always to draw nearer to God and each other. Take a moment to pray together. Lord, we are so grateful for the many gifts and blessings you give to us. Grateful for this time that we spend together. Grateful for all the connections and contacts that we have with each other. For all those things that make us a family and a family of faith. Continue, we pray, to work in us, with us, and among us so that we may find ourselves constantly aware of your presence and your care. And we pray that you will help us too as we find new ways in which we can balance our own lives and to do that for the sake of your kingdom. So we pray that the words of my mouth, the meditations of our collective hearts, may be acceptable in your sight. We pray in Christ's name. Amen. Amen. Early in the morning, while it was still very dark, he got up and went to a deserted place. And there he prayed. Epiphany, the season is about the disclosure of God, making God known, helping us to understand who this God really is. What is the character, the nature of this God? It provides the church with an opportunity to reflect on the goodness and the greatness of God. Epiphany also invites us to see God more as more than as a, a means to an end, but as an end itself. As one commentary notes, quote, an epiphany focused church might well be dazzled by God and intoxicated by God, so that its whole life is an exuberant doxology. How great thou art. This focus on the transcendent reality of God presents one side of the dichotomy of our faith. The Judeo-Christian tradition has also faithfully asserted the other side of this dichotomy. This God of infinite wisdom and power, this God who is mighty and omnipresent and everywhere, that this God is also one who is imminent, who is close, who is present, who is intimately involved in the affairs of people like you and me. So our faith holds this tension, this tension of a God who is both transcendent and imminent, far off yet very near. And Mark's gospel offers us three distinct, seemingly disjointed scenes but in some ways they underscore exactly what I have said about this dichotomy in our faith. First, 
the healing of Peter's mother-in-law. This takes place on the Sabbath. It is a private event witnessed by very few. A sidebar to the story is that the now healed mother-in-law, quote, began to serve them. And this on the Sabbath and forbidden by Jewish law. You see, <clears throat> the mother-in-law worked out her faith in serving others. Many of us, thankfully, do the same. That was the first scene. The second scene, this is a, a much more public event, a series of healings that take place at sundown as the crowds gather looking for healing. Sundown represents a new day, and the crowds are now free from their Sabbath restrictions and obligations, and they are able to travel and participate. Mark stresses that Jesus cast out many demons without even giving these demons an opportunity to speak, quote, because they knew him. Notice, too, <clears throat> when Mark suggests, quote, the whole city was gathered to see him. It is his way of letting the readers know, yes, in the first chapter of Mark's gospel, to let the readers know that Jesus is already a public figure known far and wide. But Mark also inserts a sub-theme here. What these people seek in Jesus is his power to heal. His teaching is not yet acknowledged. His identity is not yet known. Their concern is about the candy that he is able to provide. And then thirdly, there comes this confirmation that Jesus is misunderstood not merely by the crowds, but also by Simon Peter and the disciples. Let us remember that Jesus arose early in order to find quiet time and a place to focus his life. He did so in prayer before God. He is hunted down by the disciples with a demand which is implicit in the words. Everyone is searching for you. You see, the crowds were greedy for more attention, more works of power, more healing. In the wake of the frenetic healing activity, the solitude for Jesus provided a way of recentering his life. And Jesus emerges from this retreat reconnected with the enduring purpose of his life. Jesus, Jesus needed to restore balance in his life, in his ministry. So when his disciples find him, Jesus is ready to declare the result of his solitude in the form of a critical decision about his ministry. That is why he rejected their demand. Remember their demand? The people need you. Come. Do some more healing here. Jesus recognizes that the people's real interest is simply the miracles, the works of power. They gravitate to Jesus for the wrong reason. The healings, though, though of great value, 
are a distraction from the real goal. The real goal is not to be a popular healer. A larger canvas awaits his attention. For Jesus, prayer provided a means of restoring balance to his life. It allowed him to recenter his life to get focus on his mission. Because he is now reconnected with the enduring purpose of his life, Jesus can brush aside the clamor of the people. In obedience, Jesus decides to move on to the neighboring towns and there to proclaim his message. Because, quote, for that is what I came to do. Now there's a measure of comfort in the knowledge that Jesus was himself caught up in all of the tensions of life. On the one hand, the task of bringing healing to needy people, and on the other hand, the need to escape before dawn to renew himself spiritually and to keep the focus of his life on the goal for which he came. This, this reflects the very real dichotomy of our faith, as we noted earlier. We understand that God is both transcendent and imminent. At the same time, God is remote, but he is proximate, near and far. This is intrinsic to our faith in a God who is simultaneously human and divine. There are two lessons to be learned for those whose goal is to find balance in life. A challenge each one of us needs to confront. Firstly, <clears throat> We can identify with Jesus in the frenetic busyness of life. With him, we are constantly on the run. Yes, even retired people can constantly be on the run. And there is a sense in which <clears throat> the frenzied and constantly accelerating pace of our living would make our forebears shudder in disbelief. But this is the reality of life today. And there is no relief in sight for any of us. It is expected that we will work harder, produce more, do more stuff. An old African image, maybe even proverb, offers an apt commentary on our frenzied lives. I'm sure you've heard it before, but I repeat it for you today. Every morning when the sun comes up, a gazelle wakes. He knows that he must outrun the fastest lion or he will be eaten. Every morning when the sun comes up, a lion wakes. He knows that he must outrun the slowest gazelle or he will starve. In the end, it doesn't matter whether you are a lion or a gazelle. When the sun comes up, you better be running. Life is busy and hectic, sometimes even unmanageable. But in the rough and tumble of our lives, God is present with us, nearer than a brother or a sister. And our God understands our need to find balance in matters of faith. But secondly, 
We can identify with Jesus in the absolute necessity of having time apart. With Jesus, we stand in need of prayer time. It is precisely in the determination to disengage by habit or ritual or even pressing need to disengage that gives Jesus the power to engage the needs of people. When he felt overwhelmed by the streaming, clamoring crowds, Jesus knew precisely what to do. In the morning, while it was still very dark, he got up and went to a deserted place, and there he prayed. Jesus was always aware of God's power and presence, particularly in the acts of healing and casting out demons. But God's imminent presence in the hectic activity of the day never diluted the need for Jesus to find a prayerful focus on the transcendent God in a deserted place. Jesus needed that balance. Our goal as disciples is to live a prayerfully balanced life between engagement and disengagement. In turmoil of our daily lives, we will surely know the awesome presence of our imminent God who works alongside of us in the hustle and bustle of life. But in our times apart, we will sense the deep searching of our transcendent God, recentering our lives and providing refreshment for the daily grind. Spiritual balance demands not only the acknowledgement of these two dimensions of transcendence and imminence, but our determination with Jesus to seek the equilibrium that stops us from spiraling out of control. Then, then, we will be able to share Isaiah's experience. Our lives will burst forth in confident and unfettered praise of our imminent and transcendent God. Listen again to those words. Have you not known? Have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God. He does not faint or grow weary. His understanding is unsearchable. He gives power to the faint and strengthens the powerless. Those who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Let it be our goal to live this doxology as we search for spiritual balance in our living. In the morning, while it was still very dark, he got up and went to a deserted place. And there he prayed. Thanks be to God. Amen. <clears throat> Our hymn of response, number 395, Take Time to Be Holy, 395.
would invite us to <clears throat> share our offerings at this time. Again, I'm grateful for those who are here, but also those at home who give support to the ministry of this congregation. Now, our regular ushers are not here, but I'm sure we've got some additional uh, appointed ushers who are going to be receiving the offering for us today.
Eternal God, again, we offer thanks and praise for moments like these, when we can bring to you just a portion of what you first gave us. Receive them, bless them, we pray, and then use them to uphold and extend the ministry of this congregation and allow us through these gifts to bring in your kingdom of peace with justice. We pray in Christ's name. Amen. We take a few moments to gather some of our celebrations and uh, our concerns. I know that uh, we will have several to add, but today we simply want to celebrate the joys of those uh, who have recently had some surgical procedures, like Jenny, uh, who was um, able to have a stent uh, implanted and I was, uh, I must say, surprised that she came home the same day. Um, when that happened to me, they kept me a little longer. Maybe they liked me more or something <laughs> like that. So. But very glad to know that she is feeling very well <coughs> after that stent has been flooded. Others? Yes? Praise for uh, Emma. Emma that she will enjoy her vacation yes. in Cancun, is it? I, I'm not sure. Mexico, I know. Mexico, somewhere. <laughs> somewhere we miss her. But Rob did a good job. <laughs> I can't tell you. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes. My brother-in-law, Bill Samson, was very ill in the hospital. Okay. Let's take time to pray together. Lord, we are so grateful for the word you speak to our hearts today about the need for us to find balance in life including spiritual balance. And though we are able to delight in and celebrate the fact that you are the transcendent God, we are grateful too that you work alongside of us in the trenches of our own lives. Keep us focused on you in ways that will deepen our own spirituality and give us more confidence as your disciples. We hold before you today those people we know who have had surgical procedures and have moved through them and are now able to live a life that is full. We thank you for people like Jenny and just know there are many like her and we thank you for medical science, for the marvelous things they are able to do. And thank you for the gift of science and the many benefits that accrue to us as a result of it. But then we pray too for those other people who are involved in struggles of one kind or another, especially we think of those who have lost loved ones, the Swift family up in New England. And we pray that you'd be close 
to don the husband, Christopher and Carolyn, the children, but also the rest of the family who will mourn the loss of Diane. We commend them into your care, knowing that you will provide comfort that they can only receive from you. We pray for Bill, hospitalized at this time. Many of us know some of the anxiety that we feel when we are hospitalized for whatever reason. We just pray that you will calm his spirit, that you will decrease any anxiety he feels, and that you will remind him constantly that he is loved by so many and that so many hold him in prayer. And we ask that you will continue to watch over our world. There is so much pain in so many different places. So many of your children suffer because of war or famine, disease, because their homes have been destroyed. So many look for a new life. We place the hurting people in the world in your care and pray as we often do that you will provide for those who will work among them to bring light in the midst of their darkness and relief in the midst of their pain. Now again, we thank you that we are your family, that we meet together and pray that you will touch each one of our lives with your Holy Spirit. We pray this in Christ's name. Amen. Amen. As we come to the table of our Lord, I remind you again, as I find noted in the bulletin, that this is not our table, it's God's table. So all are welcome. No one is excluded. There are no reasons to stop anyone from participating in the wonder of the sacred moment. I invite you to turn in your hymnals to page 13. Page 30 in the Great Thanksgiving. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Almighty God, Creator of heaven and earth. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven. We praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. On the night in which Jesus gave himself up for us, he took bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance 
of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples and said, drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this when, as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ, Christ died, Christ, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ that we may be for the world, the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world, until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, almighty God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. body of our Lord Jesus Christ, broken for us. This is the moment when we remember that it is out of this brokenness that all of us are able to find unity and wholeness and healing. The blood of our Lord Jesus Christ it is a cup of joy, a cup of blessing. It is the new covenant in his blood. We will take the bread and the cup and in drinking it, we'll find our own faith renewed and we will find ourselves recommitted, rededicated to the service of his kingdom. We will eat and drink in faith with thanksgiving. I invite the communion stewards to come forward. body of our Lord Jesus Christ, 
broken for us. The blood of our Lord Jesus Christ shed for us. We pray together. Once again, O oh Lord, we thank you for feeding us with these holy mysteries, bread and wine. Let us never pretend exactly how it is that you work this miracle in our own lives, for it is and remains a mystery. But teach us, teach us, we pray, to be open to the mystery, even as we are seeking to be open to you and what you choose to do in our lives. Thank you for this holy moment, this mysterious sacrament. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Our closing hymn, he touched me, number 367, 367.
It's nice to be able to be at the microphone for the benediction. It is one more reason why I miss Emma not being with us today. She's normally standing here. Now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, love of God, the sharing of the Holy Spirit, be with us all. Amen. Amen. Amen.